There we go. Hello everyone and welcome to my latest video. We've arrived at North Berwick, uh, a lovely, lovely little village to the east of Edinburgh by about 25 miles. A really beautiful place. I love North Berwick. It's one of my favourite little seaside places in Scotland. Um, behind me you see the harbour, uh, which is lovely, and I've done a few paintings over there in my time. But um, today I'm going to look for a different subject. So we're going to go down the beach a little bit and we're going to come to uh, the great big rock over there called Bass Rock. It's a beautiful rock, it's a volcanic rock, and uh, we're going to have a go at a painting there. We're going to walk down the beach for well, maybe a couple of hundred metres or so just to find a spot which I, I really like. Uh, as you can see, there's Bass Rock behind me, and it's a fantastic feature of this coastline. Uh, an amazing thing. It's actually um, an extinct volcano, and that's the volcanic plug which survived the Ice Age. When the Ice Age came along, there was a huge volcano there, but the Ice Age came along and it ripped the top off, so it would have been massive. And what you're seeing there is the plug, the very centre of the volcano, which is incredibly hard rock, and the, the Ice Age couldn't rub that one away. I'm all set up now and ready to go. I've done my little sketch and I had to do a sketch today because I was changing the composition a little bit today, so moving things around. And this is the little sketch I've done. So the, the main scene here is really bass rock and then you've got the other little rocks coming into the side, the surf coming in and the spit of island on the right there is nice. But largely this is going to be a cloud painting today. The clouds are lovely today so uh, it'd be good to do that. That's such a blue sky that, lovely. Okay, just about to make the first marks now. As I mentioned before, always the trickiest ones. You think, where am I gonna, where am I gonna put the first marks? But uh, it's gonna be the cloud today. So it's, it's gonna be a cloud focused picture. So again, the blue, it's such a blue sky up there. So cobalt blue, I think, and just attack it. So, if, if you remember what my last videos are like, I'm just trying to cover the surface of the, of the whole sheet to begin with. Trying to leave some white spots for the cloud formations to come in. And they're big clouds today. There we go. And the, 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 the colour does change, so it's very, very bright blue and then goes down to a greener tone at the bottom. So maybe change and put a little bit of Iridian in it. Give that change. Dig that out. I'm using my big mop again, which I always do the first wash. Even with small paintings, I use my big wash brush. Um, so every painting is the first, always starts out with this big brush. That's it. Lots of water, <laughs> making lots of splashes today in it, but that's fine, I don't mind that. I don't mind making mistakes too much, as sometimes the mistakes that you make become an asset to the picture. It's difficult to know what, what is good for the painting and what isn't good for the painting. Sometimes um, the thing that you thought was a mistake is the very thing that makes the painting what it is. Okay, so I've laid in the wash of the sky and now it's time for the sea. So it's a change of colour really with the sea. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue on it and a little bit of Viridian. And we're going to try and block it in very dramatically here. And then it comes the other side here. There we go. The tide is coming in all the time, which is great because I, I, want, I want a little bit more uh, water in the picture than there is in the moment. There we go. And again, there's a little bit of warmth coming in there. So again, that little bit of alizarin crimson at the bottom, which uh, I always like doing. 
and that can work its way into the actual surf area or the sand. There we go. Right now for the rocks, blocking these in. Very angular rocks here, and volcanic rocks of the area. And this cuby one, which is going to be my favorite part of the painting, I think. Nice, nice cube coming in. And it's sitting on another rock. There we go. And this little stone coming in here. It's nice. And then we have some of the sand underneath it. So I just have to do a, a, a lighter wash of the same colour, really, just to indicate the sand. Okay, so that's the, the first wash done. And so I've really just covered things very quickly. Uh, it's, what, it, it's quite a fun part, part of it, um, but it's a, it's a part where you have to really plan ahead and say what's gonna happen in the future. So it's, it's the basis of your painting. So you have to be quite firm with it and make your mind up on it. There's no, there's no fiffy faffing around when you've got your first wash going. You've, you've made your decision and you're gonna go for it. Just let that dry for a, for a small time. I'm going to start on the clouds now, but I uh, don't know whether you can notice, but the cloud that was there literally 10 minutes ago is completely evaporated. So that's one of the pleasures of working on plan air paintings. Nothing, change, nothing stays the same. So there's a cloud way to the right. So I'm going to get my inspiration from that cloud there and imagine it's uh, above the bass rock there. So copy that one up there. So I've I've changed the brush to another mop, a little smaller mop, a Winsor & Newton one. Uh, it's a new brush for me, so it'll be interesting to try it. Okay, so the, the clouds have a quite a strong grey-blue colour underneath. So it's a mixture of uh, ultramarine blue um, and burnt umber, I think. And it's a sort of grey colour, so hopefully this will be a nice thing for it. Okay, so. Quite strong. Bubbles up. They're quite dramatic clouds today. And they change a lot. There's lots of shades of grey. Maybe a bit more blue. One of the parts of painting that I really like is how things change and how colours wander. I find I find that really enjoyable. So you get variety in, in the brush stroke and, and the tone. You see the colours changed a lot in that. So it's very blue at the bottom. Yeah. Okay, I'm just, I'm just blocking in the sky at the moment and uh, well, more than blocking in, trying to get a little bit of shape to the clouds and all the formations that are out there and taking a bit from over there and a bit from over there and a bit from over there because every, every, what was in front of me, which was lovely, is gone. So it, you, you've got to sort of make it up a bit in these situations. I don't have a photograph to work from, so I have to work from my memory a bit as well, which is an interesting skill to get together as well. I quite like working from memory. So just trying to keep the, um, trying to do the base of the clouds as well. They have quite a lot of darkness in them. There we go. Trying to get a little bit of darkness around the bass as well, because the, the bass is actually quite a, quite a light coloured rock. So I want to create the contrast around the rock. So it needs a little bit of darkness around that to give the contrast in the end. Okay, now I'm just going to add a little bit more to the, to the sky, darken the blue up at the very top. So dip back into cobalt blue. 
So with the washers, what, what happens is that they, they sink down and at the top here, so it's, it's, it's gone lighter because the, the, the colour ends at the bottom of the sheet because water runs downhill. So I've got to apply more uh, blue to the top to deepen it a bit more. Like that. Still using my big Isabe brush. That's it. Fill that bit in at the top that I left out. Okay, so it gives a sense of graduation coming down the coming down the sky. The sun's gone in now, so the scene is completely different. Uh, the light's gone from the from the bass and the sea, so it's a big change around. So I might have to wait a little bit just to just to get the light coming back a bit, and then I'm going to start working on the rocks. Right, I'm going to work on the cubie rock first. So it's. Lots of different colours there, some browns, some dark, almost blacks, yellowy colours. There's a mixture, great mixture, which is great. I love that, I love that variety. So, get the cube in. Try not to overmix the colours on the palette so you can still see the range of colours coming in. bit high and it's the first bit done and then there's a rock that is sitting on right here so I don't know whether you can see that on the on the painting surface you see all the little different colors coming in the browns and the blues sitting on it Right, I'm just going down into the sea now. So the sea's come forward a bit more, so it's in between these rocks. I'm going to try and add it, add it in. And in the front, so the surf's, surf's coming in. That's good. Now I think I'm going to have a little go at bass rock as well. The, trying to get the, the blue side of it, which is lovely. I love that blue side. So it's quite, quite dramatic. So there's a wonderful shadow on the side that, that is created. It's quite dark as well. So let's try and get that in, that darkness in. Bit of ultramarine blue, I think, and uh, burnt umber. It comes in and it goes into a lighthouse. There we go. I'm going to darken the sea now, and the distance says that it goes much darker in the distance. So I'm going to put a band of ultramarine blue running all the way across. There you go. Let's dark the next layer. Yeah, nice and bright. I'm running into this side as well. And they are allowing it to come down a bit as the sea gets a bit lighter in between the rocks. Um, just still working on the on the rocks coming down here. They're quite blue at the moment. The sun is out now, so the blueness has come back to the rocks. Always changing colour. 
going to add some more of the sand to it. Uh, at the moment, I've just got this plain wash on, but it, it, there, it goes in a little semicircle here, and it goes from a, a bluer color, or a bluey reddy color at the front. So I'm going to try, try and get that in. So a little bit of Elizone Crimson, um, Cobalt Blue, and Raw Sienna. And that's trying to get this sort of semi-circle of, of sand at the front. It's interesting colors that are coming out in that. I guess it's because it's wetter. It's, it's sort of having a little interesting effect on the sand that leads into these bigger rocks. It's quite a nice effect. And again, we'll, we'll do that around these as well, where it's a little bit wetter. And leading into these bigger rocks over here. That's quite nice. I always quite like that effect where the water drops down and it pools. And if you can let that dry like, it's, like it is, that's, that's a nice effect. Just going to uh, give the sky a little bit, a few more clouds here in the distance. There seem to be a few interesting clouds coming there. There we go. That's quite nice. And now to the, the rocks. Again, get my new brush out. So they're quite green. Greeny bluey colour. See if I can get those in. There we go. Quite a nice colour, almost a viridian, viridian blue. Right, so I'm just going to do the rocks in front of Bass Rock now. They've got this little outcrop of rocks in front of it, so, which are quite, quite pretty, quite, quite strong, dark colour. So I'm trying to get those in. There we go. Nice, adds a nice bit of contrast to the sea as well. And then on the side, uh, we have the rocks really coming out, launching themselves out from the sea. And that's these here. So then they go into a green uh, at the top. So a little bit of cabin yellow light will help that. Give it a sense of that grass coming on the top. It's quite it's quite late in the year now, it's August, mid-August, so the grass is quite brown. No, it's not, it's mid-September. Sorry, it's mid-September, not August. Well done, Daniel. Right, just putting the little island that's on the, on the Firth of Forth. It's called the Island of May, is that right, Daniel? The Island of May. And it's got a little lighthouse on the top of it as well. So I'll just indicate that little briefly. Um, just like the that Bass Rock's got a little lighthouse on it, which I'll try and indicate a little bit later. That's right there, but I'll, I'll put it on in a minute. Next, we'll head off to the seaweed part of the beach. So that lots of little dark marks in it, ranging colours from uh, sort of light brown, reddy browns, uh, which is probably burnt umber or burnt sienna more. And he asked interconnecting each other so the feeling of of adds a little bit of contrast on the beach i think so they go around the corner and they come in bands that's right and then towards put this there's another band of seaweed which is much darker i guess it's because the ones right next to the sea, they're, they're still alive, but the, the dark ones are dead, I think. They've just gone really dry. And the, there's a second band of them here. So lots look going into the sea, pointing that way. Okay, I'm just going to add a, a little bit of details to Bass Rock now. So maybe lighten the top up a bit. Awesome. Bit of white, so I've just squeezed a bit of white paint out and it's going to come down here just to create that contrast. So what, what I've done here, because I knew the bass rock is going to be white, whiter, I've given it a darker background so it, it can contrast between it. It comes down into it. 
Way in the distance over there, there are some nice yachts. So I'm going to include those right by Bass Rock. So again, I've, I've got a, a little darker bit here of sky. Because they've got white sails, I needed to some, something for them to contrast against. So if it was white, you wouldn't see them. So I've painted this a little bit darker and we're going to include some of these yachts here. So just to indicate them, not gonna, not gonna make them too complicated. There we go. Maybe one over here. And one contrasted against the rock in the distance. Right there. Give it a bit of a hull to it. And there we have it. On the top of the rocks here, uh, there are sort of yellow crustaceans coming down. So I'm going to try and indicate some of those. They sort of pour over like water at the top. Add an interesting colour to the picture and they sort of go down into it. So that's a bit of yellow ochre and cabin yellow on them. And they sort of step in, going over. And then they're on the top of the rocks as well, giving it a bit of shape. Quite interesting. Right, so now I'm coming to the end of the picture now. Now I like to do my pencil work on it, just to give it a, a bit of, you know, a bit of life to it really. Uh, some people ask me, are surprised that I put pencil work in it at the end, but what, one of the reasons I do it is that I, I feel that it's, it's a marking point for the end of the painting. And I feel that it's a time for me to stop painting. So when I start doing the pencil work, I've really finished it and it sort of marks the end of it for me. And it's, it's not so, I've reached the end of the really difficult part and I just enjoy doing it. It just makes me, it's like, it's like a, a, a winner's lap of, uh, of, a, of a course. You, it just, um, it's a relaxing process, I enjoy it. I don't know how much better it makes the painting, not much, but it's fun. Right, just come to the signing of the picture, uh, the final coup de grace. Uh, here we go, James Potter. Great, there we go. I thought I'd show you a little bit of a detailed look at the painting, just so you can see exactly what's happened with it. I'll just scan across from left to right and see the little boats are put in and Bass Rock behind, which I thought was nice. Such a beautiful place back, Rob, Bass Rock and North Berwick in general. We're coming down to the bottom right and the seaweed that I placed in. I think that added a nice bit of contrast to the sand. And uh, well, I'll come back and see the whole picture. There we go, there's the whole picture, which I like. I, I think it's turned up. My wife seems to like it as well. so. I'm quite pleased with it too. And the clouds, I did put a bit of white in the clouds in the end, and I thought that brought them out, neatened them up a bit as well. There we have it, the final picture. Um, it's been a, a, a diff, quite a difficult picture actually, because the, the light conditions have been changing so much. If you scan back to the beginning of the video, you can see that this, it was blue sky and it was such a lovely day, but now the winds come along. Well, Tanya behind the camera has got her arms crossed. She's absolutely freezing. My hands are pretty cold. Um, but it, it's worked out well. I think it's worked out nicely. What I had to do with this painting was really try and remember what was happening, where the light was, uh, what, what the conditions of, were. So a little bit of visual memory is quite good to develop on that one. But I, I think it's worked out quite well. I, I quite like the picture. Um, there were lots of people coming by saying, oh, that's nice, that's nice. So that gives me a bit of hope that it is quite nice as well. So you'll have to judge for that for yourself. But uh, yeah, it's, it's come to an end and I've enjoyed it. Uh, once again, uh, thanks very much for watching this and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully as much as I did painting it, I did enjoy it. And if you can subscribe, that'd be great and make a comment even better. I love, I love the comments as I mentioned earlier. And uh, until next time, thank you very much and goodbye.